Thanks, man. Oh, we went two of each. Okay, we're doing double portion. Uh, but yeah, you know, it's really, really good. You know, often in church, I mean, how about we have Jesus show up to his body? You know, so when he comes, he knows. I, I'd much rather him show up than any polished sermon I got in my book or whatever. And so I'm always looking for him to come. And I'll step aside so fast. And uh, man, he's good. Just a real strong presence, you know. It's so good. Yeah, you find Jesus and you have everything, you know. Far too often and, and continue to, you know, you can be gone in the spirit. I, I don't, I'm good. Uh, but you know, man, it's so good up here right now. How many of you feel his presence? You raise your hand? Yeah, it's really, really strong. So in I've learned in learning more in those instances when he's here, you know, you hear it, it's so cliche. You know, Jesus is here, anything can happen. But it really does. When he's here, miracles, I don't care how long you've been sick in your body, financial, I've been seeing some crazy financial stuff happen. <gasps> Oh really? Wow! Yeah, yeah. Come on, you want to? You can have the mic. You want to come up? You, you gotta come up. Yeah. Plus, tell me if you can, if how good it feels up here. What was your name again? Lindsay. Um. Whoa. <laughs> That's hard. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Um, but in all seriousness, um, oh. <laughs> uh, two years ago, I found myself in a very abusive relationship, physically, emotionally, financially, and during this time is when I started my walk with God. He showed me safety. He showed me how that he was my safe haven. Nothing else. I didn't need anything else. I needed him. And during that time, when I was with that person, I was coerced into signing, co-signing for a car. Needless to say, God showed me a way to get out of the relationship, and I'm here now. <laughs> um, but it's where every month I was watching my credit go down and down because that person stopped making payments. The car got repossessed. In about three, four months ago, Gina, I started getting calls at work on my cell phone from debt collectors asking me to pay $8,500 within two months, or I'd have to pay $17,000 in two years, or else it would destroy my credit. During that time, I found my friend Gina, and um, I just praise God. I didn't condemn him. I did not do anything but praise him and seek his glory and just ask him for a miracle. And I'm standing here right now because Brian on Friday was at Sunburn, and he gave a financial blessing. And on Monday, my heart just kept saying, check your credit score, check your credit score, which is something I don't want to do, because it's depressing. I checked it, and it said it was totally removed from my credit. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> totally removed. All chains have been broken from that, and he's just so real. He's just so real. And no one could have done that. I couldn't make that payment. I know that other person could not have made that payment. The only one who helped me was Jesus. And <clears throat> yeah. So thank you for that yeah. prayer. <laughs> yeah. Come on, praise Jesus. Can you Kleenex? No. Yeah, see, that's amazing. It's so good. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah, so uh sorry. make for a great film <laughs> right there um but yeah you know jesus is so amazing and uh 
<laughs> Thank you so much. Double portion, I'm telling you. All night. Gotta watch that. Gotta watch it. But, um... Yeah. But yeah, I remember that last week. Um, I had a prophetic dream about the angelic and financial and this whole thing, right? And then right when I mentioned uh, the angelic, feathers started popping in the meeting. So if that happens in here, you know, I didn't have anything to do with it. Uh, it's just Jesus, you know. You talk about the king as kingdom comes. And, um, but, but yeah, so that stuff like that happens, the atmosphere. And in, in, uh, I've been like graced by God, thank goodness, a few, you know, a few times to be, to enter into the heavenly realm. You know, it's really accessible. Um, nobody's really more special than anybody here. You know, Paul said, um, wow, it's just good. Um, you know, Paul said, whether in the body or out of the body, I'm not sure, went to heaven. It's totally scriptural. And how many of you know, uh, God's no respecter of persons. So if you can find, that's what I love about Valor. I want, and first off, and Bo, I just want to honor you guys. I was telling Sean, and, I, and I, I, Sean too, just want to let you guys know, just let him have it while he's here prophesy over him. He'll probably prophesy over you too, but he's just awesome, man. I've got to love him dearly. You know, he's, I, and I was telling him about you guys. He's very similar, very apostolic. They have a work uh, in the Indiana. He's not too far. And, and just that same heart, that, you know, grassroots book of Acts, apostolic, real strong. Um, which don't don't let me forget, please, if I should share that that thing again about Pennsylvania. There's a real apostolic thing on the state, even really, really is on, uh, regionally. You know, I know it's God's kingdom and all, but there's just something here. And uh, um, but anyway, you know, it, uh, yeah. So I've seen the other side, right? And, and it's all, it doesn't mean anything other than I just love Jesus. And I, I accidentally stumble in half the stuff we figure out. To be honest, with you, just because I love Jesus. You know, I really, really love him. And, uh, man, if there's anything, you know, you guys know this, that I would, I would, uh, you know, want to land or hook you, you know, you to go home with, it would be that right there, just flat out infatuation with Jesus. You know, and a lot of you here, I can feel already the different depths of spirituality, and that's okay. Some of us are shallower than others, deeper than others. It doesn't matter. God loves you the same. He's on the edge of heaven just waiting to possess you take you into acceleration like you never saw flying over obstacles you've bumped up again for so long and in these atmospheres too we're seeing quick stuff shift man so quick you wouldn't believe how quick god can move he just needs a little bit of proper alignment on your end and he, he he'll go as fast as you'll let him and, and um but also in due seasons there's seasons and, and i love it all but even in seasons of what I've, I've been in them all he'll move and accelerate and break through like you never never believe but um, where I was getting at, I was seeing the other side, and it's, I don't know, you know, there's not a lick of poverty on that side. <laughs> you know, and your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. I mean, jaw to the floor. My background was building custom homes for years, so I saw some pretty, you know, exquisite, whatever, architect and architecture and custom homes and all this great stuff. But that side, my, my mind, literally, I was in a heavenly experience, was trying to bounce off of stuff I've seen here, and it, I had no grid for it. Gates, made out of one pearl. Gates, plural, each one's made out of a single pearl, a gate. Sliding, arched tops, um, pristine, streets of gold. That's why people get hung up on gold dust, but you wonder why. When angels show up and the, the kingdom comes, it's just like the dust of heaven. Just like our streets are dust, and it shows up on stuff, you got to keep it clean. Well, dust of heaven's gold. I mean, it's, it's, it's everything. And so, um, and yeah, and begin to check yourself. This stuff will appear. You begin to talk about the kingdom, it comes. Heaven's attracted to, you know, itself. Holy Spirit loves to rest upon that which he is. And so when you, you know, you get into peace and begin to yield into him, it's like a key. Little notches are shaved just right, and it unlocks. And then everything starts. It gets so instant. Stuff starts breaking open in your world that you never knew. That easy. It's like a, it's just like a water hose that's been turned on from the beginning of time. God's kingdom is purposes for mankind. And somewhere along the way, it got a little kink in it. The faucet's still on full blast from heaven's end. But our posturing of a small, you know, shift, it unlocks that kink. And then, oh, my goodness, then you can't stop it. 
You know, you guys, you guys know powerful hoses when they're on full blast and once the water's flowing, they're hard to stop again. It's very similar, or like a dam in momentum. And so his gifts are irrevocable. It's the same way the kingdom works in his nature. Once he gives something, he never takes it back, which can be dangerous too, but it's, it's his goodness. So when things break open in your world, they, um, we got kids, a lot of kids over here. Okay. Make sure we weren't like some supernatural, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but, um, so yeah, believe for that. We've been seeing some really crazy stuff like this financially. You know, how many of you know God's not interested in you being broke and, and struggling and it's just not his way. The, the devil lies in that a lot and uses it to hang over people. And you say, well, I made mistakes. I got myself in this. That's okay. God loves you. You were in sin before you met him. You got yourself in a bunch of mess. It's okay. He, he loves you. He wants to wash you clean. And, and I'm just saying, we've seen some crazy stuff. So um, believe for that as well. And uh, healing in bodies, you know, whatever. We're already kind of late, aren't we? Sorry. 914, does it matter what a, okay. 3, 3 a.m.? We good? <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. Excuse me, ma'am. Sorry, I'm all over the place. What's your name right here in the glasses? Is it black? Uh, yes, ma'am. What is it? Tracy. Tracy. What do you do? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. See, yeah, I just feel really drawn to you. I want to pray. I believe God's, the glory of God's all over you. I can sense that I'm really drawn to people in, in these atmospheres. And it's funny, right off the back end of financial, you follow me, I just picked you off. God's going to touch you. Do something. We're going to pray for you. Um, yeah, I remember just last time we were here and an angel showed up next to a guy. People didn't know if Bo remembers the story. Um, he, he had come on his last monies. People didn't realize him and his wife were didn't even know how they were going to get back type thing. And all of a sudden I was telling Sean this. All the, I was teaching about the angelic. And he sees like a big thigh, like a leg standing by him. He's sitting right up over here. And some singing broke out too back here. I remember people, old ladies were like, that's her cell phone. She's like, I don't have a cell phone. They were trying to figure out where the noise was coming from. Yeah. And so, yeah, heaven's just for real, you know. And God's not nervous about it. I mean, you should have run around with Jesus for a little while, you know. I mean, things got interesting. Or hop around the Old Testament for a second. You got voices coming out of burning bushes. Take your shoes off. You know, angels touching sacrifices of food on rocks and fire coming out of the rock. I mean, wild wow, so stuff, axe heads floating, you know, and that God's the same. We're the ones that got off track, so he's still moving the same too. And he loves to touch his people. He loves to move in and break in. Why? To intimately know him. That's what this whole thing's about. That's what signs and wonders is about, healing you in his body, in your body, sorry. He loves you. And he wants to start a relationship and it to be just this one in tandem. This whole thing sums up with the bride and the bridegroom, you know. And uh, I touched on this a little bit last week. You notice it goes from servant to friend to the bride. There's this progression we're all aspiring to go to. And the servant knows the master well, knows his plans, and you've got some people getting it done in the earth, mighty exploits, ministries, in the servant role. And it's still great. They know very much how to function with a master and make things happen. But Jesus says, I no longer call you a servant, but a friend, right? And that's when you get drawn in closer, and he tells you greater secrets. Well, the bride goes even deeper, and that's what we, I'm telling you, that's what we want. I feel like I've just scratched the surface of it, and there's no thing will match it. No, I just want to encourage you guys. Some of you, it doesn't make sense, especially men. Sometimes we don't get that. We like, like, Lord, mighty in battle, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The sword and, you know, and all this. And, and so, uh, but I begin to stumble into him as the bridegroom. And, uh, you know, I was just forever ruined. And there's just no, there's no, no, no uh, words you can put to it. And, and uh, just, just trust me. <laughs> and I just say that to stir hunger, you know. I mean, there's realms of him. I'll tell you in Revelation, he says, the head, it sounded like the voice of many waters. There's multiple facets and offshoots of Jesus that speaks in depths of encounter and transformation and walking with him and started like a trumpet. Then he shifts to many waters and he hits all these various revelations to churches. And uh, he's so full. He's like a diamond. He just spits out light in different colors all over the place. There's no end to him. And so I just want to encourage you guys, like hunger for him, um, infatuation for him. And uh, many of you feel him now, huh? You can see that. 
Yeah. <clears throat> but, um, oh yeah, but I want to give these away. Um, yeah, they're good. So if you, <laughs> if you want to get them, they're out there. A couple of books I wrote. But the main thing is impartation. I don't have a lot though. Sorry, I just I did a carry on this time. I couldn't bring a whole lot. But um be glad to sign them too. Some people are into that. I'll tell you something fun that just happened. God cares about this type of stuff. Uh, and, and things happen too when you touch stuff and sign things and personalize it. God's into that. So we just released these DVDs from the Glory Cruise. Bo, you were with us. That was out of hand. Um, and uh, we have another one coming, coming up, not, not too far out. Um, anyway, we'll, we'll announce it. But soon ago, I slip into this. I saw, I saw, I could see it in prayer. I sense it real strong. The Lord told me to sign these DVDs, and I normally don't do that. I'll do it in these places, but not like, like that at big conferences. So I was just obeying the Lord. I'll do whatever He He says to do. And um, I go the next day to obey the Lord, and I get the DVDs, and I go to sign them, and I go into full blown deja vu. Have you guys ever had those? I mean, the encounter ones where you're tangible. You feel something coming over your head, and you're like, you've been there. Like really, really been there. I was reliving it on my island, and I had sometimes they'll come so strong I have to hold on because my equilibrium will get like your your. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Deja vu's. Well, um, those are beautiful because they, what they do. A lot of us don't know this. I know the Lord knows this, but or and probably Bo. But um, what's happening is when that happens is you, your flesh, your body, and your soul are catching up to where your spirit's already been. Yeah, so those are real experiences. You know, you can't you know you know the real ones I'm talking about where you're like, This is crazy. That lady's there. I know she's there, and this guy's supposed to be here. Yep, there he is. Like you've been there. Well, it's because you really have. You see, the flesh is limited by by time travel, but spirit is limitless. Why? The God's in all of time, omnipresent. I've been in I didn't know I was gonna go here this quick. But you guys you always do this. There's so much a depth here, you pull on stuff. Um, you know, God's, that, that's why a, a day is as a thousand years with God. A thousand years is as a day. He's in 2060, just as he is in 1920. He's vast in it. And so what happens is you get to such a place in him by the spirit, you can surpass time. And, and it's beautiful because when you begin to learn, you can lean in on purpose and you can foresee events, make a lot mess, less mistakes, and it's, it's beautiful. So what's happening is it's really good when you have those deja vu, vus. I want to encourage you. You're, you're right smack in the will of God because you're, you're catching up to where your spirit's been. And you go into them. And sometimes they're so real you got to hold on to stuff. I remember I was up in New York not long ago with a good friend, Michael Dow, burning ones. And like three happened in one day. We were definitely supposed to be up in this region. And he was talking to me in the middle of one of them, and I couldn't answer him. It was, you guys know what I'm talking about? Like a tangible thing will happen. And so um, so I know there's a lot of stuff. God's into these things. You know, uh, I'm cool with whatever he wants to do. So it even happened with signing these, this product, because sometimes he wants to impart things, touching of stuff. Paul Acts 19, he touched handkerchiefs, given to bodies, and things just happen. And uh, so I, was, I went into one for... Even that, so just anyway, let you guys know I'll be glad to sign anything or um, whatever we want to do there. But I remember one time, um, and it's a good presence here, sorry. Uh, yes, yeah, so I was praying into an, to see, I needed to see into an event that evening. And I want to encourage you guys just to stir, and we're going to go for it. I want to, you know, I'm going to leave enough time because I'm going to lay hands on all of you guys. Just go for it. Let's just let a bomb go off and counter God. You know, it's an encounter service, if, and you don't have to if you need to go, no sweat. And then tomorrow morning we'll see where it goes. Oh, yeah, I have some, uh, dr some dreams I need to share, if you can remind me. Because they, they're just meaningful. I know how it is if I don't share them now. You know, they're for right now. And some of you guys won't be back tomorrow. I know how it works, just God. And then I'll probably hear something different tonight for tomorrow. But, um, uh, but anyway, yeah, so this time, I want to encourage you guys, these are places you can tap into by the Spirit in the, this is where God intends to us. Like I said earlier, if you find it in Scripture, it's for you. I don't care how far-fetched it seems. Grab it. If you slightly feel your spirit go, ooh, that's amazing. Stop. Camp out. Pray it through. I'll hem up on one verse if I have to all day or whatever. God, give me that. I've got to, you know. And he's no respecter of persons. 
you know, like we were saying, uh, and I love that about Valor too. She, Bo is doing amazing honoring her, but she, we, we carry that. It's like we want you to know, though, it's not, it's for everybody. And so prophets, let's say you're not a prophet in the fivefold, that just means the nature of what you hear, the criteria, if you will, the material won't always be, you know, same effect or regional and whatever. But the accessibility of seeing in the spirit, hearing in the spirit, dreams, visions, everything you see in scripture is wide open to you. I, I believe that as well, even coming out of Bible college that, oh, that's for the big superstar saints or Paul. Man, that's amazing. He got to go to heaven. Before I started really going after heaven, and heaven took me up like Ezekiel. I'm between the heavens, Ezekiel 8.3, and I was like, well, what was that? Uh, I had to come out of it and take Tylenol just because it was like a roller coaster. It was so real, out-of-body experience. Um, Ezekiel 8.3, and that's an out-of-body, which is scriptural. It's kingdom. It's for us. The dark sides tried to take what was initiated you know, initi initially for God's people. Anything supernatural was always created by God first, obviously. And it's predominantly and dominantly used by the kingdom of light. Everything else, the darkness uses it for is secondary and inferior. And so you see it says, if you read closely, Ezekiel 8, 3, it says, the hand of the Spirit of the Lord grabs Ezekiel by the locks of his hair. You say, well, that was his natural hair. No, it wasn't. It was his spirit, man. I can tell you that you're just as real. Your spirit, man, I'm telling you. Uh, so that hand, literally, the spirit came, grabbed me by the neck. I had short hair at the time. This is real. This is a real. Like, I had no locks to grab. <laughs> so I'm telling you, these, these encounters are so real. And so if you don't want to be hanging up in the heavens by your locks, just keep your hair tight and short. <laughs> and, uh, and boom, there it went, man. I literally see my, I'm leaving my room. Everything is so real. And, and you're, you're gone and up through the stars in between the heavens, went into this full vision that I foresaw this major thing I needed to know about. So all the way back down, boom, I'm in my bed. And sure enough, it happened a few weeks later. I needed, you, you see it. Ezekiel's caught up to, te why? Because he was taken into visions of God. And he foresaw things with Israel, you know, Israel and all this, came back. And, and what, what, why God does this too, it's a lot easier, the clarity of reception by revelation, if he can separate your spirit from your soul. So that's why he does this, not for the while of the encounter, but he literally, he's like, this is an important one. I can't have him blurring it with soul. In dreams, we can even misinterpret a little bit. That's why I said too, a lot of times I'll send angels. When it's real significant, you'll notice in scripture, you'll send an angel in a dream. Because the message is very important. You can't be messing up symbols and parallel, you know, which he, he longs for us to lean into and really get good at. But some, some weight, you know, some of the weight of messages he doesn't even play with. Well, this is another one. You know, separate, pull your spirit up, and then um, you're like a, a rag doll. It's a trip. You're not there. To be out of the spirits, you know, to be, anyway, it's a while. So, um, uh, and then, you know, you'll see the, see it unfold. Trances are this way, too. I didn't even know I was going to go here. This is crazy. God's going to impart this stuff. I know how he is. If I start going down these directions, he's just wanting to deposit it, you know. So... Trances are the same. Acts 10.10 10 says Peter was up on the rooftop hungry and in prayer. He's, and just listen to that. I love how God is. God also speaks so every day. You need to know that a lot of times we miss God because we think. And a lot of you have seen stuff and you didn't even know you saw it because you just wrote it off. It's oh, too simple. Now I was thinking that earlier. Or you had a dream that was similar to what you did that day. And you thought, oh, that was too much. That must have been my soul. I was thinking that already. Well, listen to this. Paul's hungry. Why did the Bible go out of the way to mention that? He's hungry and in prayer. Falls into a trance. Then sees a vision. Sure enough, comes down, eat. God's talking into him in the context of eating. He's hungry. And so God, he's so personable. He's watching everything. Uh, you know, and, and so just know that even you'll, you'll write stuff off. I say journal and lean into steward everything, unless it's clearly the voice of the devil. And then, you know, the more you work that muscle, it stays God. So anyway... A trance is the state you get put in to then see the vision. A lot of people think the trance is the vision. It's the state, and the same thing happens. Your conscience, your soul, your mind, will, emotions gets pushed aside, and then the vision unfolds. These are a lot easier to see versus a vision alone. Visions are all over Scripture, too. You see Ananias is in prayer, Acts chapter 9 or 10, I think 9. Saul, no, it says, Ananias goes into a vision. Jesus comes to him. He says, hey, Ananias, Saul, who's now blinded, you know, for, he just had the encounter. Uh, 
He says, Saul just saw you in a vision, seeing him, in a vision, that you're going to go pray for him. It's crazy. The vi if you start really tracking how God pieced together this whole thing called the church, always dreams, visions, encounters, revelation. And then I don't know where we get off in the church thinking we've got to systemize this thing and get all the supernatural out of it. It's like, yeah, that's not God's way. Solomon, wisest man, ever stepped foot on the globe. Never before since anyone like him. Y'all were singing about the lion. that was so powerful. I just read the other day. Gold, ivory throne, you know, totally wrapped in gold. And then a lion he had next to him. He's on the throne. Another lion next to him. And then the six steps of gold and two lions on each step, which is the 12. The, the apostles, the apostolic, the trinity up top. It was so prophetic and representative. The authority in the lions. But the wisest man, how do you receive it? In a dream. There was not some crazy, powerful encounter. It says he was sleeping. God came to him in a dream. You even read one of them. It's either Chronicles or because the story's mentioned several times. Or is it Kings or Chronicles? Anyway, it, 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 one of them, it says God spoke to him. He asked for wisdom to govern the kingdom. And then it just says, for he woke up, for it was but a dream. I bet Solomon was probably even like, I'm getting my bearings back. I can feel my legs are I'm good. Um, I bet Solomon was like, man, that was crazy. That'd be cool if I, that really happened. That was a dream, though. You know, woke up, went about his business. But the, the wisest man that's ever hit the globe received that supernatural wisdom in a dream. There's divine impartation that will flip your destiny upside down in one dream. Acts 10.10, 10, the trance I just told you about, that one vision alone opened up the Holy Ghost. Who's in here is a Jew? Not many. Well, praise God. We got one authentic. <laughs> Everybody else is grafted in. Yeah. all Everybody else, nobody in here would have the Holy Ghost if Peter didn't have that one vision, one trance. The Holy Spirit had opened it up. You know, he's like, eat. Uh, dirty. No. You know, we all know the cheat comes down three times, unclean animals. Well, well, that's what happens. And that's how God's building his church and also flipping destinies upside down. Um, so the, the, the trance is in day, you know, um, I'll usually go into them when I'm waiting in silence and stillness upon the Lord. It looks just like this. I find a very comfortable spot. I don't do my knees just because mine hurt after a while and I get distracted. But I love it. If you can do it, I, I can't do it because you want to sit there for a while. And, um, you know, I'll just sit there and focus on Jesus. Just set the Lord before you. He is the gateway. Nobody gets to the Father but through Him. I've even meditated upon His wounds. I know we're getting a little mystical now, but it's all in Scripture. I've slipped into I was meditating on just the wound of His palm one time, the hole in His hands. and I want to know Him in the fellowship of His sufferings and resurrection power. Man, He's amazing. Wow. And uh, that's a good cry. You know, I just love Him. So I slipped through, going to a full-out encounter. I dare you to start looking at Jesus for a little while with hunger, you know, and uh, just begin to meditate on the wound, wounds in his, in his hand one day. And boom, I catch myself out in the spirit, was going over like the Bermuda Triangle, I've been to South Africa before. One time, I'll just be honest with you guys, just go for it. It's, you know, and then I leave and you know, clean up the mess or <laughs> whatever. But, <laughs> but uh, one time when I was slipping into some wild stuff, I went out in the spirit and I'm literally traveling through this apartment complex and I'm like going through the walls. <laughs> And, um, and I, I go through one, this person's in bed and their dog sees me. I kid you not. They're watching me and I go, boom, and I go straight through. And, uh, I was like, oh my goodness, just learning, you know, a lot. And then the other ones have been really, uh, really wild, but that's scriptural too. The donkey sees the angel before, you know, it's totally in scripture. I'll tell you this powerful one. My mom, she started taking some of our live stream schools. She's precious, loves Jesus. And, um, she's been having all kinds of stuff break out. Uh, in our schools, it gets a little wild sometimes too. And um, so I forget what school she was taking, and um, stuff started getting a little. And it has been ever since now. But there, she's got these dogs. Well, this one Yorkie, this little mini Yorkie, real sweet, sleeps in the closet for some reason. Always sleeps in the closet. All the other dogs sleep like in bed with her or whatever with my parents. Well, all of a sudden, in these midst of wonders and stuff that was happening. Um, this angel came through. It was a wonder of, of the Lord calling my mom to the secret place even more because it manifests in her closet. Go into your closet, shut the door behind you. And, and you've you got to watch wonders. God's real intricate when they break out and when he moves, when, why, where. 
And, uh, and you see that in Scripture. When God moves or speaks, they, the prophets and everybody that log get, they get very specific. When it's everyday stuff, it gets general. You know, you'll notice that in Scripture. But when God moves, they're like, they track it, and that's how we've got to be. Daniel chapter 10, he goes, it was the first month. 24th day. I was on the bank of the Nile. Gabriel came. Ezekiel, watch them all. First month, fifth day. You know, in the year Uzziah died, the heavens opened. They, they just everything's tracked to the day. Where was I? They steward God's voice. First Corinthians 4, 1, Paul says we're to regard ourselves as, you know, servants of Christ, yes, but stewards of the mysteries of God. And so I want to encourage you guys, you know, he's not going to just sling pearls out to people that just don't really cherish them that well. You're not going to get too too valuable, so you start and uh, you can. I, I keep a voice recorder uh, in my bed. Actually, last night, I mean, boom, just recording dreams. Then I'll I'll shift them over to my journal the next day, and and really journal stuff. Daniel seven. This is the dream I had, O King Daniel. This is its record. Is it Habakkuk two? It says write down, or is it Haggai? Habakkuk two. Uh, write down plainly upon tablets what I revealed to you. Um, on and on and on, all throughout Scripture. So, um, yeah, so she wakes up and she goes in her closet and, and uh, she sees this gold dust, this trail of gold dust going through her closet and it goes through the wall and picks back up in her restroom. And, yeah, angels, they, you know that. They don't really care about barriers and stuff. They just go through and come and go as they want, ascend, descend. And that's how the spirit realm works. But soon as since that night, the dog wouldn't sleep in there anymore. <laughs> yeah, she, you knew it. She was like, oh, she saw it. She saw it. You know, a little Yorkie. And um, so it's a spiritual little dog. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, and that spoke of locking away in the secret place, in the place of rest, the restroom. It even speaks of that. So if not purity, it speaks of just getting back into a place of rest, not striving. And, and um so that's really good. Yeah, so I wrote these, and um, I, I won't really take up a lot of time, but just encourage you guys. We don't have a lot, but they, uh, yeah, they're impartation books. I mean, the testimonies, I could hold you for a while. People just, um, you know, I remember that we first released them in Virginia, and a guy, young man, college, never had a vision in his life. Because his first, he didn't get through the first chapter. And that night, he was so excited. He emails us. He went to his first vision. So there's oil on him. I wrote this one at, at the fourth watch, 3 a.m., an angel will come in, and it gets really wild. When I first figured it out, I, I remember I learned um, 3 a.m. was really, really good for some reason in prayer. Fourth watch is 3 to 6 a.m. when Jesus walked on water. You say there's a fourth watch. And Revelation would just flow, and I didn't know why. I would just get up. First, it was just my discipline I had with the Lord. So I'd get up at 5, just trying to get as many hours of the day I could in this season. Backed it up to 4, and then I backed it up to 3, and it was like oil and honey. And I was like, what is going on? I couldn't write fast enough some mornings. It was just revelation. I was waiting, seeing. And uh, until a, uh, and this may start happening to some of you. That's another reason I share these things. A lot of people don't know it. It stirs hunger, number one. There's, there's teaching in a lot of this. You'll notice this. I'll share it to stir hunger. Then I'll, I'll branch off, start teaching on it a little bit. And then also it creates the atmosphere for impartation. That, that's why we do it. Because we, God... You talk about any aspect of heaven. If you guys watch Cornerstone, that's why I talked about healings and miracles a lot. You notice that I shared a lot of testimonies, and then healing started breaking out. You share about wonders, wonders breaks out. Well, intimacy, and we'll do go for it all as, as, as the weekend allows. But there, there's reason in it because, and then these wonders you wouldn't believe when we share them, it just starts happening. Stuff just starts manifest. So if it does, don't freak out, but it's just God, and he's good. Well, um, it was like 2007 or eight. What was that? Did y'all just see that? That was crazy. But uh, <laughs> so anyway, <clears throat> yeah, so about 2007, 2008 or something like that. Um, yeah, come, Jesus. Just uh, move, have your way. Touch your people that we may know you more. Yeah, just encounter your people. Yeah, and I pray, man. That, how many of you are staying here at the hotel? Okay, awesome. And there's a lot of you are from the region, maybe? You just aren't raising your hands? <laughs> They're like, yeah, they know us. We, we know, we know, we, we know, we all know us. 
Well, yeah, I want to raise your expectancy to, we may ask tomorrow and see what, what's cracking, but, um, yeah. So one morning, 3 a.m. on the dot, my laptop computer next to my bedside table turns on supernaturally. Freaked me out. And I'm like, it's not plugged in. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, nobody's in the room. You know, I'm like, who's in here? They can see me, but I can't see them. You know, it was good, though. It was glorious. And um, how many of you know two? Oh, yeah, before I, before I uh, stop, I want to definitely give these, and then I'll give these to whoever, too, but to sweet lady. Yeah, you're welcome. And then um, anybody else? Not Do you have these? Yeah, I thought so. So good to see you, too. Yeah, she's awesome. Yep. Yeah, yeah, we... Uh, well, we met in New York, but yeah, aren't you like an actress and, and you model and do all kinds of stuff? And Jesus rocked her world recently. She's, yeah, going for it, man. It's awesome. Yeah, she's so hungry. Yeah. Sorry, I mean, to, yeah, no, but it's awesome. Yeah, we, uh, heaven's touching all facets of the globe right now. You know, stuff's really, really good. Um, so I'm like, man, who's in the room? You know, and I've been around supernatural enough and just want to encourage you guys, like, when heaven starts breaking in, it's a lot of fun, and it gets it gets wild, you know. Again, just look around in Scripture. You can't get too far. Turn in any direction. I mean, you know, I love this stuff because God's in it, and it, He's supernatural. His voice is in it. Just look at heaven. The living creatures, four heads, eyes and wings, and it just, He's really a lot of fun to me. Um so in, in, in the supernatural of God's kingdom and light, when it breaks in, it's much more beautiful, obviously purposeful, but it, it gets wild, you know. And so the dark side does, it moves, it, you know, for its purposes too, but, but light. So I, uh, I go, man, what is going on? And it, it stayed on and it would not turn off. And then I go, I go, how's that possible? I thought they, oh, because it turned on closed laptop i heard it go boom and i could see the lights shooting out of the sides and it was closed i was like how do they do that because you know when you close them they turn off so i thought that's impossible it was a dell at this time so i'll kid you not i turned it off i'm trying to play with it because i just I, i'm very real too you need to know that i'm not i've always been that way even in, in before previous days in college i'm like is that a fiction book i'd have to read a book for school i was like no no it's not real like, based on a true so no i can't i just you know it, it bless you if you like those i just I'm, i want everything real i'm not that way you know so i'm not into you know so i get a long bread knife close the dell computer thinking this is not possible so i slip it in there and i find the power button and i go <laughs> and sure enough it turned they turn on closed it's just some some mechanism once you shut them from being open they they do whatever so it's like How, how's that happening so um i uh this began to happen 3 a.m. on the dot for mornings. I got it on video. I was like, this is getting out of hand. Eight mornings, nine mornings, ten minutes or two mornings in a row, ten in a row. Uh, unplugged. So I was like, that's it. I'm going to wake up 2.58 and video this. <laughs> so I got up, and it wasn't 2.59. It wasn't 3.01. You need to know heaven is on time. When heaven steps in and heaven takes your, your quiet time with him, your secret place that you devote to him so precious and, and cherishes it more than you know he's not legalistic not some condemning if you miss it one day but he's infatuated with you and he's like on the edge of heaven i don't care if you're rocking the nations or a, a housewife he loves you and his call on you is the same the rewards if you obey what you're called to do the rewards are the same you know you're, you're rewarded for what you're called to do uh you know what i mean and um yeah Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. I have it on video. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so 2.58. I'm like, I got you now. So I'm, I'm watching the clock, and I'm going back to the computer. And then, and then I begin to figure out, it didn't matter if it was open, closed. It don't matter. But watch this. If it was the fourth watch, these are wonders. And je just the angelic presence would come in. And that's where I was getting with you guys, the blue book I wrote during this fourth watch. The green one, we worked with the publishing company. So there was a, it was a bit of a time slot I was in. I had to grind to pump it out. It was still good, though, but... Um, 
but I would write that blue book. You know, that, that revelation was there. Just whew. And so there's a lot of encounter in the book. So I want to encourage you because you read, just and you feel hungry, lean in, feathers, people, stuff starts manifesting. And um, oil, all kind of stuff or whatever. And uh, so what was I saying, sir? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I mean, you freak out, but it's been happening so much. Yeah. And, you, you, you know, you're like, you know, something's in the room. Like, it's like, oh, my goodness. Um, so, but yeah. So, oh, this is what I was saying. When it's the fourth watch, it would stay on. And I had to turn it off. Otherwise, it would stay on because it was the call of the fourth watch to stay awake, alert. But also, computers represent downloads, they, they, revelation. They download things. It was a sign of wonder. I had to talk to this other prophetic friend that was back when I was a little young, and he explained it to me. But they'll they'll manifest wonders with reason and purpose, but also their presence triggers these things. We've had crazy stuff happening with electronics, you name it, all kind of stuff. My kids have seen it, you know, whatever. It's just it, we all, whoa. Um, um, so anyway, uh, oh, but then what began to happen was uh, it would turn on in the middle of the night for a sign and wonder regarding verses and chapters and things with prophetic dreams. And then the angel would turn it off on its own then. So say, you know, like a, a good dream I had years ago was regarding the, um, this, this mysterious verse in Isaiah 45, three, and it says, I'll tell you the dream first. I, I go on a prophetic dream. And I'm going to believe God. You know, if you feel hungry, begin to just tug on God. And if you want to check out and not listen to another word, I say just, but I'm more after, let's have our lives wrecked and transformed by God, you know. And because when this stuff cracks in, it never, it just increases. God only moves from glory to greater glory, to greater glory, momentum. He never digresses. He doesn't know such a thing. So I'm getting this dream, dark alley, walking through, very dark, hard to see anything. And um, I come across this big, you know, big container, and I open it up, and it's hard to even see in there, very dark, hidden, and my eyes adjust, and I see in sta endless stacks of cash and money come out of this dream at 453. And this is what I'd already known by then. I had to learn that God would do this, but this is Isaiah 45, 3. So if God wakes you up at, out of a dream at a time that's not normal for you, not just like waking up in the morning, you immediately watch the clock and he's always sawing in verses that better confirm what he's trying to tell you. And it lands more and there's greater unction like, wow, this is really God. Isaiah 45, three says, I will show you riches in darkness, treasures in secret places. And since then, this financial thing broke open in my life and, and there's impartation in dreams. Like I told you guys, when God's anything, any way or thing that God conveys his voice, there's substance on it. It's never just mere revelation alone. His, his presence and in, in his substance and ability is in his voice. So when he speaks at anything, it, it gets hit with him. And then it's encapsulated in the ability to fulfill that word. There's impartation in everything he does. You know, that's why his voice, too, is incredible. He's never going to reveal something to you. And then the grace to walk it out and not be there. And um, so these type verses all the time. It happened last night, 307, Amos 37. is. Something I need to share where he shares his secrets with the prophets. And Amos 307 got woke up and out of. And 444, all, all those. Isaiah 55, 5. I'll show you. I'll bring you to nations you know not. Um, Jeremiah 111, you know, the, the accelerated promises of God. Daniel 222. But there'll be all kinds. So uh, anyway, so I begin to learn this. It, the angel would turn them on for a, for a specific window to verses he was showing me. And... Um, so this happened so much, I was like, I've got to know. This is either Jesus stepping in the room or an angel. I knew it was one of them, and their presence was triggering this. So I, was like, I went after heaven hard. I said, God, i got to know. You know, I've seen angelic before, but in this form, I, I mostly see their wonders. They, they perform all kind of stuff. And um, so I was really going after the Lord. And I was cool either way, because angels are sent from the Lord. It's totally scriptural. Hebrews 1 says, aren't they messengers sent to assist those who are to inherit salvation? So they're sent, and when, when they come along, revelation starts flowing. A lot of us don't realize that an angel just stood by you when all of a sudden mysteries that you never knew before or ideas just start flowing. A lot of you will feel heat or wind too. Hebrews 1, 7 said, aren't my angels, messengers, winds and flames of fire? Those are manifestations when they come around. So anyway, uh, yeah, I'm waking in the middle of the night, 
as I'm trying to figure out what it is, 1228 uh, uh, laser beam, like this foot long beam of light shoots. I hear rustling over by my chest of drawers where my clock's at. And it wakes me up and I, right when I look at the clock, 1228, a beam of light shoots out, hits my computer and it turns on. And I knew right away because 1228 is the 12th verse of Genesis 28, 28. It's the most mascot angelic verse of all of Scripture. Angels ascending and descending from Jacob when he went on the... Uh, and then John 151, Jesus says it. It's the New Testament, Jacob's Ladder. He says, uh, you'll see angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. So then I knew it was an angel coming, and it, it helped. You know, it got to work in these mystery, mysterious ways. Um, we were in uh, Virginia ministering and i'll start to bring it to a close so i'm gonna lay hands on you guys and i was talking about this and the angelic and such as this but i need to share those revelations i'll be real quick i'll be fast and we go into the cafeteria virginia tech campus very dark campus you know any of you guys know the history there like they they had like oh what are you waving oh awesome i mean it's a very light filled campus the glad i'm john teasing <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally teasing, but um, but yeah, when we had went there, you know, it was they were known for crazy stuff, murders and things happening on campus, whatever. So uh, amazing food though. So we're eating in the cafeteria, and all of a sudden, I don't know where this huge white feather. This is in a totally secular football player. Everybody's running around crazy, and and we had a crazy atmospheric wonder happen to that same weekend. But a big white feather just appears out of midair over all of us and floats right down. We got a long table. A bunch of the students from this Christian group were in there. <clears throat> Floats right in front of me. I'm in the middle. There's a long table. I catch it. We check the time immediately. It's 151. John, you know, John 151. Angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. So we pass it around because a lot of students have never seen this before. It's a sign and wonder. And they're all excited. Somebody kept it or something. But um, uh, just to let you guys know, yeah, he's moving in wonders, his voice, but he, he just wants to break in with you intimately and begin to guide us specifically through destiny, you know, so we can hear him. And, um, but yeah, let me share these revelations and then we'll pray and see. So I had a dream. This is the Amos 3-7 one, where he re reveals the secrets to the prophets. And I'm going to try and convey it. It's really good. So just know that right away. It's really, really good. But it's just something we need to know. You know, everybody, I knew it was a corporate word. So it's going to apply differently for a lot of you guys. But I know the Lord. If, if he gave it to me last night, I have to share it. Some of you guys may not be here tomorrow or whatever. Um, but basically, I want him to share the details of the dream for the second time. But it had to do with... I hadn't seen this story in forever either on your own time. Genesis chapter 30. If you go down to like 37 and start going through there, you see the story of when uh, Jacob is getting ready to part, you know, part ways from Laban, right? He went after, I think it was Leah first, and then Laban tricked him. He had to work all those years under him, and then he got Rachel. And, and you know, was under Laban for all these years. Well, at the time, he was supposed to split ways. It was a good thing if you read further, okay? But just so you guys know, because it just helps us handle it good when it comes, uh, handle it better when it comes. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? If you foreknow, there's a secret. It's going to come around the spring too. Yep. But if you foreknow it, when it comes, you go, oh, this is that, and then you know how to handle it. Versus if you don't foreknow it, things can be rough and people make the wrong decisions and don't go through it, you know, because you didn't know it was supposed to happen that way. Or you didn't, you didn't imagine it to split and go a certain way, and so you try to force it and just stuff gets not good. So it's always helpful to foreknow. So anyway, this dream basically had to do with where Jacob goes up. I could see the tree bark and everything. And... He tries, he knows it's the Lord now to split and go off his way. He's been with Laban for a long time. Well, Laban says, read it on your own time. He says, look, okay, but I know since you've been with me by divination, the scripture says, divination like I know by, you know, the divine, since you've been with me, we, the Lord's blessed me. His herd and everything increased since Jacob was with him. So there's something, it's, it's, it's going to be both, it's going to apply both ministries and the workplace here. So however it applies to you, and I think we have Laban's and Jacob's in here, and they're all good in this context. 
okay? Because you see how the story ends. But all I'm trying to point out are crystal clear, tied into Amos 3, 7, saw this, it's coming this spring. There's, there's some parting of ways that that's God, and it's good, so it'll be easy if you foreknow it versus trying to force something to happen because Laban tried to force it to not work, and that wouldn't be good. So he goes, sure. You know, he goes, I, I know God's blessed me since you've been with me. Um, you know, how can I bless you? Jacob says, you know me well. I've taken care of your herds. I don't want anything from you. Just let me take, you know, this, this spotted and striped sheep, you know, and so forth. You start reading through there, right? Well, Laban pulls a slick one on him. He goes, he goes, okay, no problem. But he hurries up and tells his sons, get all the striped, you know, and, and spotted sheep, goats, and pull them out of the herds. So when Jacob goes, he won't have anything to leave with his family. He, you follow me? Jacob was trying to move on into the things of God. He needed to part ways. This speaks of people that have been running together, doing things together. In the Jacob company, you've been with others, and it's, been, it's caused great blessing to be on the Laban side. But also Laban's had great means as well. To, it's, it's counterbalanced. The whole situation has been good, both sides. Well, um, and it was a little weird. I just have to be obedient. You know how it is. If I don't share it, the Lord will be like, <laughs> you know, he just speaks and I got, I got to answer for it. So, but it, it's, it's really good and it'll, it'll handle a lot better when you walk it out. So Jacob goes, they're all gone. He goes, no problem. He foresaw it in a dream later. You see the Lord shows him by dream that about the striped and spotted situation. So we all know the story. He pulls the tree bark off of the sticks, pulls stripes down it, puts it in the water trough and the goats and sheep mate what, while they're seeing that. They produce spotted and striped goats so he could take them. And um, and this is what the dream was. It had to do with the whole tree bark. And the whole only time in the scripture is this story right here with the tree bark that I saw out of it and, and the stripes and such. And so uh, Jacob started pulling the strongest ones out of the striped and spotted, building up his herd. And then he went to leave. Well, Laban's sons, things got shaky. And this is why God's foreshowing this so it doesn't go here. That's the whole thing. God's good. So, so when th you see things parting, it's not going to go here. God's trying to say, look, it doesn't need to happen. You follow me? Because if you look at it closely, God blessed both sides. And the split was supposed to go that way for the betterment of the kingdom. That's how it works. But sometimes we can get in the way. And, um, and you know me. Y'all know me. I love authority, unity. I'm all about it. But also the voice of God's. We need to know these things. They help. And so, um, so Laban, his sons get stirred up, start talking against him. Laban turns on him. He goes to Rachel. He's like, look, you're, the favor of your father has gone from us. We need to get out of here. And uh, he goes to, to, oh, and then God comes to Jacob in a dream. And he says, look, return to the land of your forefathers. You've got to take the herds, everything, go. And then all of a sudden God goes to Laban in a dream. He says, look, don't speak anything good or evil against him. Like, don't come against him. So Laban could hear from God too, you know, dream. I know he had some shady ways. So did Jacob, he would steal and do some things. But, uh, so basically they come to a truce and they mark a line where look, I'll stay. but it does say Laban, you can tell he was a loving man. He just want to give his grandkids a hug again, his daughters and go back to his business with his herd. And he went on, they made a truce before God that they wouldn't harm each other. They bless each other. And it finally came to unity. But, um, definitely the whole tree bark situation and the splitting of herds and it's going to look to the Laban side like, you you know, you almost were taking uh, the financial. I'm, I'm trying. To, it's hard when you get revelation the night before to have it polished. <laughs> you know how it is. You try and convey. That's the hard thing with flowing off a of fresh revelation. You can't, like, preach it several times. But I'll never preach this again unless I hear it, you know. Um, but I would say the best way to, to see it, and it's definitely in the spring. It had to do with even bees and the stripes tied into them and pollination. It has to do with a growth and a work and a financial increase. So also, if you stay united, it's not going to be good. God spoke to Jacob. you got to go now. You've been here all these years. I was okay with it. There was agreements made, but now you got to move on. Okay, so watch the spring. I know that's a little quick, but it will look like even in the workplace, you know, ministries and such. And I'm by no means, only if this lands and you get it and God's like, yep, yep, yep. And it makes sense. I never promote. It's a good, it's a good thing. And um, so basically, you know, uh, if, if you come to an agreement that God's doing it and it's good and he's going to bless both sides, you know, it's good. Also, I saw um, somebody, I saw this on the plane. Uh, somebody trying to run to first base and being hindered pretty hard, which shows me a lot. 
it was, it was like a vision I slept into on the plane uh, coming here. It shows me you're just even, you feel like you're even getting started out into the things that God's called you to destiny. And you're trying to even go to first base and you're already getting hindered and held back. And I just want to encourage you out of, um, I think it's Deuteronomy, you see where God speaks to Moses and he tells him to go to the promised land. So I want to encourage you, you're going the right way. A lot of times when we get resistance and kick back, we start doubting the whole thing. We start doubting, am I even going the right way? Did I hear God? But you're, you are right on the line going to the first base that you have to get there to go to second. You know, a lot of people will, will get out of order and skip it. There's too much resistance and want to run to second. It doesn't work that way. Got to go to first to get to second to third. And um, you see this in Deuteronomy. God tells Moses, go to the promised land. I've called it to you, land of milk and honey. Moses is like, great. He's like, yeah, you just got to go through Heshbon. You know, just got to go through this one region to get there. They're in the, they're in the way. So he's like, okay, cool. So Moses goes up to Sihon, king of Eshbon, and says, hey, guy, you know, we have to get there. God spoke to us. And a lot of you are in here. God spoke to you. You know you heard him, but you've been getting kicked back and resistant, starting to doubt it. I'm here to encourage you. You heard God, but, but, but keep mowing through. So Moses tells Sihon, king of Heshbon, he's like, look, you won't even know we're here. We don't want any trouble. We'll stay on the main highway. We won't even get off track. We're just coming through. We've got to get to the promised land. We'll even buy our drink and our food. You'll make money off of, us, off of us. We'll be a blessing to you guys. Well, if you read closely, it says, The Lord hardened the heart of the king, Sihon, king of Hesh, uh, Heshbon. And you're like, what? You know what I mean? So a lot of us, we start rebuking the devil and all this stuff when, you, you know, you know Moses is probably like, man, you told us to go through here. Now you're hardening the heart of the king that, to, that's resisting us from getting to where we have to get. You follow me? And so that's where also we start to doubt we even heard God and we'll pull back and you miss. But if you read the story in its context, God does it on purpose to give them greater spoil and good. So usually resistance, the Lord's causing it and you, you haven't missed it. You got to just keep pushing and grinding up against it and it'll fold, makes you stronger. And it says they defeated them, took all their spoils and everything and then still got to the promised land. You guys tracking with me? Does that make sense? Yeah. So. I just want to encourage you to keep pressing. When I saw that, I knew. I said, somebody's, you know, because if we're not careful, we, 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 we pull back and we don't continue on. When often the Lord's hardening the hearts. You can rebuke the devil all you want. The Lord does that. I don't know why he does it. I don't like it. But, you know, um, he, will, he will cause that. It strengthens you, gives you greater authority and ground. And, um, yeah. Oh, and then also, too, I saw... Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, some people were still dealing with some some sin. I'm just gonna be honest with you, and we just want to pray. I'm not gonna call you out, but I, I saw several things and from a dream last night that um, Jesus just wants us to be free in. You know, the sins that so easily entangle us, and it's really hard to walk into the higher ways of God while we still kind of have one foot in this and a foot in that. And how many of you know God wants us to live holy, you know, and pure? And He's not upset with you. He loves you, so don't. If you're feeling that, that's not God. He loves you. It's not. He's never condemning. Um, so we'll pray real quick. Maybe the musicians want to come, and we'll get ready to lay hands on you guys. But it, repentance is really, really simple. It's a heart posture and choice before God. You know. And you say, well, what is sin exactly? It's anything Jesus wouldn't do. It's, it's pretty simple. If you got a question whether you, then then it's probably too close to the line. You know what I mean? I figure. Like, I say, play this more cautious route. The, the, the more safe route and um and he'll give you grace you know a lot of you too even addictions that you've had for a long time he's going to set you free immediately he does that because he's good and, and you won't have to go back to it but yeah repentance is this you're going a certain way with decisions that aren't quite in the ways of jesus and you stop and you just turn back the other way it's repentance it's just turning around and um it's not so much a prayer out loud, although you can confess it in your heart and we'll, we'll pray, but it's, it's a life choice and he'll, uh, he's going to set us free. So awesome. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I also saw a clock, um, beautiful clock. It's kind of like pocket watches that are on chains and stuff hanging in a wilderness this is on the plane and it was about to fall off the branch and i knew the timing of a wilderness for some of you guys is about to be up 
You, you could see it, yeah. And, and what was interesting was the wilderness was even plush and green and beautiful. It was just out in the middle of you know how wildernesses are. They're out in the middle of nowhere. They're they're rough. But this, there's still, there's been a lot of growth. Uh, I knew from seeing it, it was such green and plush. There's been a, even, you know, God, even though He had you there, there's a lot of growth, uh, minerals, spiritual strengthening that that happened. But you could tell it's about to fall off the branch, and the time, time is going to be up. So that was really good. So, um, Sheila, let's pray, and then uh, I want to lay hands on you guys. Is it? Do we have time? Or, okay. Awesome. Yeah, if you just want to focus on Jesus and. <clears throat> Yeah, so whatever that may be, you know, even when I mention that, a lot of times your heart will kind of start beating a little faster, you know, or get a little nervous. And, and But God's not into highlighting people and calling you out and embarrassing you. He loves you. He just wants you to come after Him wholeheartedly and break off those sins that so easily entangle you. And so, um, so whatever it may be, just, just before Jesus, you, you and Him right now, internally, uh, I'm gonna pray and just let that let that go. We just won't go back to it. Jesus, I just thank you so much for uh, everyone in here, your presence, in your voice, and even now, God, I thank you for your your blood. I tell you what, I know this is a little cliche, but I feel to do it just for the, the state of some of the people in here. Um, everybody just repeat after me. I know it sounds a little churchy, but sometimes it's good for people to confess it. Um, so everybody just yeah, repeat after me. Uh, Jesus, I need you. Uh, I thank you for pointing out the, the sins in my life so I can know you more. I want to be holy as you are holy. As the Bible says, I want to be perfect because you are perfect. So even now, I repent of my sins. I ask you to please forgive me. Wash me in your blood, Lord Jesus. Make me new. I give you my life. I turn away from those sinful ways, those addictions. I want you fully in my life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now just receive. Just receive. Focus on Jesus. Yeah, in Jesus' name right now, I, I speak against addictions, even from earlier. Be broken off of your lives right now by the power of God chains just falling off in the presence those sins that so easily entangle i pray a disgust of those things and a holy addiction for your presence lord jesus a holy hunger and addiction for you to come upon your people complete liberation and freedom in jesus name yeah you feel that even now that lightness that freedom he brought you uh, uh, several of you here tonight even for that and, and showed me a you know, boy, all the way down from Louisiana, just so he could be back one with you in unity, freedom, taking his yoke upon you, which is easy, his burden that is light. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, in Jesus' name, too, I thank you, God, for uh, the grace. Uh, of those that have been hitting up against those barriers going to, to first base from the dream. I thank you for grace to continue and move forward, that supernatural strengthening to move forward, move forward, move forward. I'm telling you by the Spirit of God now, move forward. You're on track. You're right where you need to be. Just keep moving forward. Do not submit to the kickback. Move forward, move forward, move forward. I decree greater spoil greater spoil and breakthrough authority and increase in Jesus name in this house promised land breakthrough promised land breakthrough God I thank you for time the time running out in the wilderness grace and fulfillment of your purposes in Jesus name <clears throat>